Most law enforcement experts will tell you nothing is more effective than cops on the beat when it comes to fighting crime. But police officers can't be everywhere. And now, they don't have to be. Aaron Moriarty of 48 Hours goes inside the country's most sophisticated crime surveillance for our series, CBS Reports, Where America Stands. Every minute, a car is stolen. Oh, no. Oh, no. Every day across the country, 44 people are murdered. And nearly 3,800 are victims of violent crimes. While crime usually rises during a recession, the report card tells us this time it has not. Across the country, violent crimes are down 5.5%. Crimes like murder declined 7.2%. Robbery, 8.1%. Motor vehicle theft, 17.2%. The reason why, say law enforcement officials, is the increased use of high-tech tools to fight crime. This is the operations center. From a control center that resembles the Starship Enterprise. The center police, okay? Chicago city officials keep watch over the 232 square mile urban area with a massive network of cameras creating a virtual eye in the sky. Officials refuse to give actual figures, but some estimate the number of publicly and privately owned cameras targeting Chicago to be around 15,000. You can zoom 32 times optically and up to 184 times digitally. What does that mean? Could you see that person's license plate? Oh, we can get license plates. I'm not going to pull up a specific license plate on that, but yes, you can actually zoom in very clearly and see the license plate. On the day we were in Chicago, officials were keeping a close eye on crowds gathering for a Tea Party protest. Can you identify the people who are there? Can you actually pick out faces of who were at a demonstration? Well, we're very strict on actually how we use the cameras and for protecting privacy. Nicholas Beaton is a paramedic assigned to the operations center. We'll never zoom in on windows, we'll never look into buildings. And also we're very, very careful on whether we actually zoom in on people's faces specifically. People in most cities are probably captured on camera daily, if not multiple times a day. Jim Harper of the Cato Institute says the problem with surveillance cameras and technology is they have a spotty record of preventing crime. Instead, he says, they are an invasion of privacy. As these cameras are networked together, and as they are better capable of recognizing individual faces, people might realize just how much they're being watched. Harper says the danger is when videos are released of individuals not actually involved in a crime, like this video of a man changing his shirt. His picture was broadcast nationally because officials first believed he could be the Times Square bomber. There's no sort of absolutes here, is that, is that cameras are helpful in some instances, cameras are harmful in other instances if they've uh, led us all astray. This is 911 emergency. But there is likely to be a demand for even more surveillance cameras. The solution then, say officials, is ever more sophisticated equipment that catches criminals in the act. 911 operators in Chicago can turn on any surveillance camera within 150 feet of an emergency call. So when a 911 operator received a call that a Salvation Army bell ringer was helping himself to the collection bucket, as seen in this video, the cops were called in. We're showing you the live video. The brain of the video surveillance system is computer software called analytics. It allows operators to set up a virtual perimeter around buildings. As this demonstration shows, once someone or something crosses that virtual line, like this man walking out the front door, the computer sends an alert to an official on duty. It's looking for a face-like object in this image and it clips that out and says, okay, that's the image. Chicago has the, the most advanced uh, surveillance camera network in the United States and probably the world. Chicago Police Commander John Lewin runs the Information Services Division. He points to mobile cameras called pods, police operation devices, which allow cameras to watch high crime neighborhoods in real time, which is how they were able to catch this man as he attempted to burglarize a home. And this arsonist, after he turned a dumpster ablaze. Are you concerned that officers will rely too much on technology? No, I think, as with any technology, none of these things are the magic bullet, you know, if you pardon the pun. These are tools. They're just going to be another tool in the toolbox that's going to help officers do their jobs. The Fourth Amendment protects against unreasonable searches. Americans will have to decide when this Stop now! 
goes too far. Aaron Moriarty, CBS News, Chicago.